Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Following my last video about GCSEs, A-levels and finals motivation, a lot of you have asked me about past papers. So I thought I'd make this video very quickly to tell you how you should be using past papers, what sorts should you do and how will it be useful for your revision in the end. So let me get to it. Past papers, like I said in the last video, are a key part of you preparing for your exams. A question that came up was, Sen, there aren't actually that many past papers for the new specification. So let me quickly go through how I actually went about revising using past papers to give you guys a few ideas as to how you can use them as well, despite there being quite a few of them. So initially, you want to start off doing past papers that are the most recent ones. Why? Because you need to gain familiarity with the most recent questions that they're asking. By starting with the latest 2018-2017 papers, you will really understand, okay, this is the sort of question they're asking. These calculation questions seem to come up quite often. These questions or mechanisms seem to come up quite often. They love calculations and physics on this certain topic. Again, you will really get an idea of how they're testing in these past papers. So these most recent past papers, you should use them for exam technique. When you do these past papers, make sure you do them without the mark scheme initially, then go through them with the mark scheme. Do not forget to do that. Fine, you've done all the recent papers, what do you do next? Well, here is the interesting point. You should then look at the old specification. Why and how will it help you? Well, with past papers, I think there are two main types of revision. One is your exam technique, which is being improved. The other is your knowledge of the content being checked. Now, doing these older papers, the point of this is to simply check whether you know the main points for every topic. Do you know all the key points that you need to mention when you're doing a titration? Do you know all the points that you need to mention when talking about electromagnetism and physics? So, all these different questions that the old spec has, it's not like they're completely irrelevant. Most of the stuff is very, very similar to the new specification except it's just been rejumbled a bit. So doing these old specification papers will be super helpful for you to gain a better understanding of the content. Now do bear in mind, your new specification might actually have a few topics that the old specification didn't have, and the old spec might have a few things that your new specification doesn't have. So when you do come across a few topics that you genuinely think, wait, this isn't in my specification, just skip them. But ultimately, the point of doing these old spec papers is to just improve your knowledge of the content. What I suggest is maybe you start off with the 2015, 2014, 2013 papers and go backwards. That's what I did when I revised. I started with the most recent papers available, then I went back right until around 2008. When I got to 2008, I realized, okay, these questions are getting quite funny now. They're very different to what I'm used to. Still, they're testing my knowledge of chemistry, but the questions are quite hard and a lot harder than the questions that I had come across earlier on. Not only that, they were asking for more facts as opposed to more application-based questions, which I was used to doing the more recent papers. Still, I did the 2008 papers, and then I realized, right, I now have a good understanding of sort of the chemistry aspect of it, and then I went back from 2008 to the most recent papers. So doing 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, up until the most recent papers, 2015 and 16, and for you guys, 2017 and 18. Now the point of ending on the most recent papers again is that you are once again familiar with the most recent type of questions they're asking. The most recent papers are there to improve your exam technique, to make sure that you know exactly how the questions are going to be asked, the style of the questions. So do you see? You have to use a combination of these old papers and new papers to help you both boost your exam technique but also boost your knowledge of the content. Now this tip applies to all sciences, math, biology, chemistry, physics. So make sure you do this properly and really focus on this. Next point is about exam boards. Should you be doing questions from other exam boards? Many people have asked this and here's my answer to it. Ultimately, you need to do your exam board to get used to the style of questions, to get used to how you are going to be questioned. Especially now with the new specifications, there are fewer past papers. And like I said, there are two parts of the past paper practice, exam technique and testing how well you know the content. So by doing other exam boards that and their past papers, you will still be testing your knowledge of chemistry, of physics, of maths, um, of biology it won't disadvantage you to do other boards past papers. 
there will be topics that your board doesn't cover. There will be some topics which are far more detailed than certain boards than they are on others. So you need to be wary of this when doing other boards. So do other exam boards, question papers, to just practice and to get more experience sort of knowing and getting sort of the knowledge sorted out. At the end, in the last few weeks up until the exams, you want to make sure to just be doing your exam board's past papers. So if you do loads of Excel papers for practice, then you go to the exam and you have an AQA paper, they're going to be completely different. So again, it's all about that familiarity with the exam, developing that over time. But still, use other boards, it will help you consolidate your knowledge. Now a really big thing I want to mention in this video is how you should actually use the past papers. Should you have them on your computer and, you know, sort of go through them like that, or should you actually print them out and do them? When I was studying, even back at GCSE, I noticed one thing. The best tutors I had, they would always recommend to do the past papers in full A4 size. Why is this? Well, think about it. In the exam, you'll be sitting down there with A4 sized question papers. The diagrams will be a different size, the lines will be a different size, the amount of space you have will be slightly different. What you need to do is get used to this. If you try and save money and print them out small, or if you try and save money and sort of do them on the computer, you're not going to develop that real sort of feeling of what it's like to actually sit in the exam and write. Some people would disagree with me, but this is my opinion. I know it's bad for the environment and all, but ultimately you want to get the top grades. What will happen is you'll get so used to the exam format that when you go into the exam, you're going to be familiar with everything except what the questions are. So once you start the papers in the actual exam, subconsciously you'll be used to all of sort of the, the paper layout. And that will then allow you to fully focus on just making sure you mention, you know, all the points you need to mention, making sure you understand the questions they're asking. These things I'm telling you might seem a bit nitty gritty and very sort of particular, but the tips I'm giving you are to simply allow you to get the best grades possible. You know, like I said in the last video, whether you're going for A's or A stars, whatever, just use these tips and you will notice a difference. I can guarantee that. I hope this video has been a bit helpful in helping you sort of understand how to use past papers at GCSE and A level. If you have any questions, do comment down below. I will try and answer them very soon. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching. Keep smashing it. And I hope to see you guys soon in the near future in another video. As always, take care. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.